I'm Christopher Liner, Chair of the SEG Honors and Awards Committee. On behalf of the committee, I welcome our esteemed recipients and our audience viewing the 2020 Honors and Awards Ceremony. This virtual ceremony is a first for our society, and we want to give all this year's recipients the recognition they truly deserve. I would like to give a special thank you to Occidental for their continued sponsorship of this event. Thank you, Oxy. The honors and awards process of the SEG is a very proud tradition of our society. The people and institutions we honor represent our common ideals through their work and actions. The process depends heavily on the membership for nominations. Much research is required to ensure that the process is equitable. I would like to thank my fellow committee members for their efforts in researching potential awardees. John Bradford, Bill Abriel, Nancy House, and Rob Stewart. They're to be commended for their diligence, fairness, and thoughtful judgment. The first part of this program recognizes those SEG members who serve the society this year in our distinguished programs. These are flagship professional development programs provided by the society as part of our commitment to SEG members. Due to challenges associated with COVID this year, all of our lecture programs quickly adapted and transformed into virtual events, reaching far more attendees than expected. The SEG Distinguished Instructor Short Course, more commonly known as DISC, is an eight hour, one day short course on a topic of current and widespread interest. Selection of the DISC instructor is a major honor and recognition of professional excellence by the SEG. The 2020 DISC instructor is David Monk. David's course is survey design and seismic acquisition for land, marine, and in between in light of new technology and techniques. Dave will be kicking off his disc with a virtual course this week and will tour throughout the next year. SEG's Distinguished Lecture Program offered two lectures this year. In addition to recognizing an individual's contributions to the science or application of geophysics, this position is an active effort to promote geophysics, stimulate general scientific and professional interest, expand technical horizons, and provide a connection to SEG activities and practices. The January through July 2020 Distinguished Lecturer was Sergei Fomel. Sergei's lecture was titled Automating Seismic Data Analysis and Interpretation. The August through December 2020 SEG AAPG Distinguished Lecturer is Arya Abubakar. Arya's lecture is titled Potential and Challenges of Applying Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning Methods for Geoscience. SEG offers the Honorary Lecturer Program as a companion program to the Distinguished Lecture Series. Each honorary lecturer focuses on a specified geographic region. This regional focus strengthens the services that SEG provides to its expanding global membership. The following individuals are recognized for advancing the science and technology of geophysics in their respective regions. Patricia de Lugau is the 2020 Honorary Lecturer for Latin America. Patricia's talk is titled Environmentally Friendly Exploration Using Magnetotellurics. Johan Robertson is the Honorary Lecturer for 2020 for Europe. Johan's lecture is titled Generalized Sampling and Gradiometry, Changing the Rules of the Information Game. The 2020 Honorary Lecturer for the Middle East and Africa is Salah Aldosari. Salah's lecture is titled Improving Reservoir Characterization Using Four Innovative Seismic Technologies. Anna Shaughnessy is the 2020 Honorary Lecturer for North America. Anna's lecture is titled, Developing a Successful Career in Geophysics Today. Lisa Gavin is the 2020 Honorary Lecturer for the Pacific South. Lisa's lecture is Regional to Reservoir Stress-Induced Seismic Azimuthal Anisotropy. The 2020 Honorary Lecturer for South and East Asia is Jinming Wu. Jinming's lecture is Deep Learning for Seismic Processing and Interpretation. The Near Surface Global Lecturer provides online lectures in topics in near surface geophysics. 
The 2020 Near Surface Global Lecturer is Estela Atacuana. Her virtual lecture is titled Biogeophysics, Exploring Earth's Subsurface Biosphere Using Geophysical Approaches. Thank you to all of our amazing lecturers for the time and effort each has devoted to making SEG's professional development program a success. At this time, I would like to invite SEG President Rick Miller to present the next series of awards. As Chris mentioned, the awards process of the SEG is a very proud tradition of our organization. It has been a key component of SEG to recognize individuals that have made significant and special contributions to our science, profession, and society. It is my privilege to present awards honoring our colleagues for achieving the best of the 2019 issues of interpretation, the leading edge, and geophysics, and the 2019 annual meeting in San Antonio, Texas. This next group of awards recognizes those who have enhanced scientific knowledge through poster and oral presentation that have been judged to be the best of the San Antonio annual meeting. Upon conclusion of each session at the annual meeting, the session judges submitted a judging form. The points from the, from the forms are then tallied, reviewed by the technical program committee, then submitted to the SEG board for final approval. The 2019 SEG annual meeting featured 1,077 presentations and the presentations included many of the most esteemed individuals in our profession. I am pleased now to recognize the winners for the last year's meeting in San Antonio. These awards recognize quality in both content and presentation. The winner of the award for best student oral paper presented at the 2019 annual meeting is waveform inversion by model reduction using spline interpolation by Guillaume Barnier. The award for the, for the best student poster paper presented at the 2019 annual meeting is seismic impedance inversion based on cyclic consistent generative adversarial network by Yan Quinn Wang. The award for best oral paper presented at the 2019 annual meeting is angle dependent and angle independent least squares reverse time migration case studies by Thomas Connell, Michael Kean, Eric Duvenick, Thomas Rayborn, Dong Gwyn, Anu Chandran, Farhad Bazargani, Richard Palmer, Bruce Strawn, Mandy Wong, and Xi Yang Yang. The award for best poster presented at the 89th annual meeting goes to Yike Lu, Ben He, and Yi Che Zin for their presentation, Controlled Order Multiple Waveform Inversion. The next award is Best Paper in the Leading Edge in 2019. Nominations for this award are solicited from the membership at large and selected by the TL Editorial Board. Criteria to select the best paper are that it be concise, clear, original, applicable, and have technical and or educational impact. The award for the 2019 is presented to Jacob Bayer, Bryce Jensen, Yingping Li, Jian Run Chen, and Ken Matson for their paper, Salt Seventh Proximity to Delineate Salt Boundaries Using Seismic While Drilling in the Gulf of Mexico. The voting for SEG's peer-reviewed journal interpretation combines input from the SEG and AAPG membership at large, reviewers and the editorial board of the journal. The 2019 Best Paper Award in Interpretation is presented to Kyle Roiber and Paul Mann for their paper, Control of Precambrian to Paleozoic Orogenic Trends on a Long Strike Variations in Early Cretaceous Continental Rifts of the South Ocean, South Atlantic Ocean. Of great importance to our profession are the peer-reviewed articles in our journals because they form the archive permanent scientific framework of exploration geophysics. This year, the editor, associate editors, and past editors of geophysics have selected on the physical principles underlying electromagnetic induction by Mark Everett and Alan Chay as the best paper in geophysics in 2019. That concludes the awards for the 2019 issues of interpretation, the leading edge, geophysics, and the 2019 SEG annual meeting. I'd like now to welcome Jeff Schrag, geophysics editor in chief, to present this year's Geophysics Reviewer of the Year Award. 
Each year, the Geophysics Editorial Board recognizes one reviewer who has made an outstanding contribution to our peer review process. Selecting only one reviewer from over a thousand geophysics volunteers is a challenging process. However, our tireless SEG staff work diligently to relay a number of key statistical indicators to assist with the decision process. The metrics include a number of papers reviewed, the average turnaround time to complete the review, as well as a quantitative quality of review metric as assigned by our associate editors. This year's honoree stood out amongst uh, the rest with 13 papers reviewed, the fastest turnaround time of only five days on average, as well as a perfect three out of three quality of review score. This achievement is all the more impressive considering that he is doing this while finishing up his PhD at ETH Zurich. Uh, I am pleased to announce that this year's recipient of the Geophysics Best Reviewer Award is Eric Gunn. Congratulations, Eric. Thanks, Jeff. Before turning the ceremony back over to Chris, I'd like to make a few special presentations. While not an award that is given every year, the president is able to grant the presidential award to individuals who are recognized as having contributed outstanding service to the society. This year, I've chosen to make four presentations of this award. The first recipient of the presidential award this year is SEG Associate Executive Director of Publications, Ted Bakamjian. Ted is, rece is receiving this award with deep appreciation for his outstanding vision, selfless and long-term dedication with unwavering commitment to excellence in scholarly publication and governance, which has been instrumental in establishing SEG globally as a foundational source for the cons conservation and communication of applied geophysical knowledge. Congratulations, Ted. A second presidential award is presented to former SEG staff editor, Dean Clark. Dean is receiving this award in recognition for his innovative ideas and unique perspectives into the science and history of SEG and applied geophysics that have served to guide and mold the leading edge from infancy to its current place of prominence among the most elite geoscience outlets. Congratulations, Dean. Also receiving the presidential award is SEG past president, Bob Hartage. Bob is receiving this award in appreciation of visionary guidance steadfast leadership and a stellar career of service and research benefiting not only the SEG, but the entire applied geoscience community. With more than 51 years as a member of SEG, Bob has never turned down a request to serve the SEG and its membership in leadership roles. Congratulations, Bob. The final recipient of the presidential award in 2020 is past president, Bill Abril. Bill is receiving this award in recognition of advancing a vision of excellence for devoting energy and creativity to building and encouraging a future of relevance and strategic success for the SEG, accomplished through leadership and innovation focused on strengthening the SEG's prominence as the global leader in applied geophysics. Thanks, Bill. Thank you, Rick. This next portion of our program highlights SEG student chapter engagement. SEG currently has over 200 chapters around the world. Each year, student chapters are invited to compete for the best student chapter award by completing an application that outlines their activities from the previous year. The activities are listed in several categories, including engagement with SEG, outreach to the university and community to promote geoscience study and career opportunities in support of newer, smaller student chapters. Any chapter that completes a basic informational report receives the status as a base chapter. Chapters that complete the application have an opportunity to achieve status as either a ridge or summit chapter based on the quality and quantity of their activities. Summit chapters are the top 10% of those who complete the application for best student chapter according to evaluations done by the Student Chapter Excellence Program Committee. The committee narrows down the top three summit chapters for consideration as the best student chapter, which comes with a prize of $5,000 and travel grants for students from the chapter and the chapter faculty advisor to attend the following year's annual meeting. Chapters that achieve the status of summit have members who have applied for and participated in SEG events or have applied for funding through SEG field camp grant program or SEG scholarships. They've been active to outreach local schools or within their universities with well-planned activities that engage students and help them learn about geoscience careers. 
Additionally, the committee compares scores for the year's application to the same chapter score from previous years. The chapter which has the highest score relative to last year is named the most improved student chapter. The most improved student chapter is awarded $1,000 to use however they choose to benefit the chapter. The most improved student chapter award for 2020 is presented to the Universidad Industrial de Santander Geophysical Society of Colombia. The winner of the best student chapter for 2020 is Uppsala University Geophysical Society of Sweden. And congratulations to these student chapters. Each year, the SCG Near Surface Technical Section bestows awards honoring the great men and women who have made contributions to the discipline of near surface geophysics. This year, I have the privilege of presenting these awards. This year's Harold Mooney Award is presented to Julian Ivanov. The honoree is chosen by his or her peers through nominations from the membership and recommendation to the SEG Near Surface Geophysics Technical Section leadership and is presented to an individual in recognition of long-term, tireless, and enthusiastic support of the near surface geophysics community through education, outreach, professional service, or development opportunities with other professional disciplines that employ geophysics. The Frank Frischnicht Leadership Award is presented to Hans Rudi Maurer. This award is jointly presented by the SEG Near Surface Geophysics Technical Section and the Environmental and Engineering Geophysical Society. The Frank Frischnicht Award is established to recognize an individual who shows extraordinary leadership in advancing the cause of near surface geophysics through long term tireless, enthusiastic support of the near surface geophysics community. Such leadership is often boldly displayed by an invention, a new methodology or technique, a theoretical or conceptual advancement, or unique innovation that transforms the nature and capabilities of near surface geophysics. Congratulations, Julian and Hans Rudi. This honors and awards program now presents our selected colleagues with society's highest honors for contributions to the science, the industry, and the profession. Those being honored this year were first nominated by you, the members, and then researched by the Honors and Awards Committee. The Outstanding Educator Award honors individuals for excellence in geophysics education. It is awarded to members for their educational qualities and contributions. The first recipient of the SEG Outstanding Educator Award this year is Shala Bahan. Shala Bahan is a professor in the Department of Applied Geophysics at the Indian Institute in Dabad. He led the Center for Innovation, Incubation, and Entrepreneurship and is Dean for Research and Development. He was awarded the National Geoscience Award by the Government of India in 2012 for his contributions in resistivity, induced polarization, self-potential, electromagnetic, and gravity and magnetic methods. He has worked on the exploration for gold, silver, copper, and uranium. He's an associate member of the Indian Academy of Sciences, Bangalore. Glowing testimonial to Shalabahan's impact from former students and colleagues include phrases like, Dr. Shalabahan is a brilliant teacher inside the classroom and an inspiring leader outside the classroom. And another, Professor Shalabahan is a passionate and organized teacher who develops inspiring relationships with the students, not only in academic or career fronts, but also as an elder brother for personal suggestions and support. He challenged me and pushed me, but it is by far the most beneficial and rewarding three years I've ever spent in a course of my educational career. One comment summarizes Shalabahan very well. He is the best teacher and best person I've ever seen. Congratulations, Shalabahan. The second recipient of the SCG Outstanding Educator Award this year is Ilya Svankin. Ilya is a professor of geophysics at the Colorado School of Mines and director of the Center for Wave Phenomena. He is well known in the exploration geophysics community for his seminal contributions in seismic anisotropy, as well as three books and more than 150 scientific papers. He's been awarded both SEG honorary membership and the Virgil Kaufman Gold Medal. Ilya has taught numerous geophysics courses as an SEG instructor, 
has taught professional courses around the world to the industry and universities. Testimonials such as working with LDI has changed my life and set me on my current professional path. And I witnessed how, and another said, I witnessed how Ilya unselfishly dedicated much time to his students, their work, and carefully nourished their often unstructured and erratic ideas into impressive master's and PhD theses. These examples of the impact that Ilya has made on the professional lives of students and colleagues earn him this award. Congratulations, Ilya. The J. Clarence Karcher Award recognizes significant contributions to our science and technology by a young geophysicist. This year, we're honoring two geophysicists whose achievements have earned them the respect of their peers beyond their years. The first recipient of the Karcher Award is Fang Yu Li. Fang Yu is assistant professor in electrical and computer engineering at Kennesaw State University. He has authored or co-authored 12 papers in interpretation, seven in geophysics, and more than 30 expanded abstracts for presentations at SEG annual meetings, and holds three US patents. Fang Yu has contributed in theory development, code implementation, and field data applications of seismic imaging, quantitative interpretation, seismic attributes, and seismic attributes. One of Fang Yu's associates indicates that, quote, Fang Yu is one of the most promising young geoscientists in our profession. Throughout his short career, Fang Yu has worked with a wide variety of collaborators and has contributed to the fields of seismic processing, imaging, and interpretation, to hazard identification and real-time processing, and to applications beyond exploration geophysics that build bridges to the civil engineering and public safety communities, end quote. Congratulations, Fang Yu. The second recipient of the Karcher Award is Siddharth Misra. Sid is a researcher and educator across the disciplines of formation evaluation, petrophysics, geophysics, and subsurface data analytics. His current research is focused on data-driven fracture characterization and quantification of fluid storage and connectivity. He's advanced new laboratory methods for the electromagnetic sensing of rocks, as well as new machine learning procedures for the interpretation of geophysical subsurface measurements. Sid has more than 35 journal papers and 25 conference proceedings and is co-author of four patents and four patent applications related to subsurface geophysical sensing. Based on his own innovative technical contributions in exploration geophysics and petrophysics, Sid was awarded the prestigious Department of Energy Early Career Award for Geoscience Research the SPWA, SPWLA Young Technical Professionals Award, the American Chemical Society New Investigator Award, and the SBE Mid-Continent Formation Evaluation Award. Congratulations, Sid. The final recipient of this year's Karcher Award is a Shin Ming Wu. Shin Ming received his PhD in geophysics in 2016 from the Colorado School of Mines where he was a member of the Center for Wave Phenomenon. He continued as a postdoc at the Bureau of Economic Geology, University of Texas at Austin, and then joined the University of Science and Technology of China, becoming professor in 2019. There he started a research group working on processing and interpretation of geoscience data sets. Shin Ming and Dave Hale's paper on image processing for faults won the best paper award in geophysics in 2016. He also received an honorable mention for his presentation on automatic stratigraphic interpretation at the 2018 SEG annual meeting. Shen Ming was selected as the 2020 SEG honorary lecturer for South and East Asia to present his work on deep learning and seismic interpretation. He is an associate editor for interpretation and geophysics. Shin Ming is said to be, quote, a true star of computational geoscience with great contributions to exploration geophysics, unquote. Congratulations, Shin Ming. We now turn to the SEG's Life Membership Award. SEG Life Membership is conferred on members who voluntarily rendered exceptionally meritorious service to the society. This year, the society confers Life Membership to Zhijiang. In the past, Xi has been awarded both the SEG Regional Fessenden and Outstanding Educator Awards. He has served on the SEG Board of Directors and numerous committees. 
In this role, she is credited with essentially building and supporting the SEG China office along with Alfred Liao. As an SEG volunteer, he's engaged in numerous activities to promote SEG and the science of geophysics. He's been an SEG member since 1991 and a trustee associate of the SEG Foundation since 2010. Xi served as a member of the SEG China Advisory Committee to help SEG convert the China Representative Office to a wholly owned enterprise in order to initiate SEG organized workshops and promote student chapters in China. From 2010 to 2013, Xi served on the board of directors of SEG Global Inc to manage both the SEG Middle East and China offices. He served on the SEG Meetings and Review Planning Committee and SEG China Task Force. He chaired the SEG China Advisory Committee in the 2012 CPS SEG Conference in Shenzhen, China. He served as the SEG South and East Asia Honorary Lecturer in 2016. As SEG Second Vice President in 2015 and 16, and SEG First Vice President in 2016 and 17. Congratulations, Yuji. SEG Special Commendation Award recognizing des recognizes deserving persons for meritorious service to the public, to the scientific community, or to our profession. This year recognizes Marianne Rausch with the SEG Special Commendation Award. Marianne is an accomplished geophysicist who has successfully applied new ideas in effective and viable ways to a career spanning more than 30 years. She has a passion for science and geophysics and is thrilled at a successful application. She is author or co-author of more than 25 SEG papers, has given numerous presentations at SEG and other professional society meetings, and two continuing education courses. In the last few years, her papers have stood out for ways of utilizing 3D seismic technology effectively in unconventional resource development. Marianne represents the optimal geoscientist, merging the ability to detect new technologies with the ability to develop and implement practical applications that have enabled industry to solve the most challenging problems of the day. For her lifetime contribution to the industry and lifetime support of young generations of geophysicists throughout continuing education, she is deserving of the SEG Special Commendation Award. Congratulations, Marianne. The SEG gives its Distinguished Achievement Award to a company or institution for contributions that have substantially advanced the science of exploration geophysics. This year we present Smart Exploration with the Distinguished Achievement Award. Smart Exploration is deserving not only for technical advances, but also a focus on communicating to the public the role that applied geophysics plays in exploration and development of natural resources. The Smart Consortium, a partnership between industry, academia, and government, has produced numerous peer-reviewed papers that technically advance science through public education. The partnership has enhanced the role of applied geophysics as a critical tool for lower impact mineral exploration needed for emerging green technologies. Through the partnership, numerous emerging professionals have achieved success and notoriety. The public outreach and cooperation with society in general highlights the value of geophysics used to locate and produce these alternatives in a manner that reduces impact overall. This consortium is critical for retaining the social license to operate and providing evidence and information of the critical role that geosciences and collaboration have in providing energy for humanity now and in the future. Congratulations to the SMART Consortium. SEG's Cecil Green Enterprise Award recognizes the importance of entrepreneurs to the economic vitality of our profession. This award is given to those who have demonstrated courage, ingenuity, and achievement while risking their own resources and future in developing a product, service, organization, or activity, which is a distinct and worthy contribution to the industry. This year, SEG presents Gary Tuberty with the Cecil Green Enterprise Award for establishing Avalon Sciences Limited. Gary started his career as a field engineer and spotted a niche op opening when he was a young and brave enough to take the risk and step away from a high paying job to be a founding partner in Avalon Sciences Limited. 
Starting from scratch and risking its own capital, Avalon developed an analog advanced seismic receiver, then the digital geochain system and various size, pressure, and temperature configurations. Gary became sole owner of Avalon in 2008, growing the company to 70 employees based mainly in the company's UK headquarters. Operating throughout the world with bases in Houston, Abu Dhabi, Singapore, and Beijing, Avalon plows back considerable resources into research. Gary and Avalon are committed to the seismic service sector and are proactive with novel seismic solutions. He and Avalon provide expertise to major players and service providers in the oil and gas industry. Congratulations, Gary. The Craig J. Beasley Award for Social Contribution was recently established to recognize a person or organization for meritorious achievement that supports the application of geophysics to a humanitarian, public service, or other socially significant cause. The 2020 Craig J. Beasley Award for Social Contribution goes to James Clark. James is recognized for his sustained humanitarian geophysics work over more than 10 years. He has made significant contributions in at least two ways. First, he developed the plans for a low, elect, low cost electrical resistivity instrument that can be built easily and deployed in developing countries along with software for processing and interpreting the data. He published this work in 2011 and it's now been downloaded more than 12,000 times. Second, he has worked on the ground in Africa for many years training teams of locals on how to use the instruments and interpret the data to help find groundwater resources. James worked with Water Access Rwanda and Water 4 as they established and trained resistivity teams in seven countries. He has shown that these local teams significantly increase the well siting success rate over wells that are sited without geophysical information. He has also done humanitarian work in other African countries, Central America, and Central Asia. Congratulations, James. The Reginald Fessenden Award is given for a specific technical contribution to exploration geophysics, such as an invention or theoretical or conceptual advance that merits special recognition. The first recipients of this year's Reginald Fessenden Award are Felix Herman and Charles Mosher. Felix has focused his research and consortium for many years on compressive sensing and sparse inversion, and he and his students have demonstrated application to seismic acquisition, processing, and imaging. Motivated by rendering harmful aliasing into incoherent noise through randomized sampling, Charles de-risked this technology and improved acquisition productivity substantially by randomized survey design and wave field reconstruction via sparse inversion. This breakthrough is a great example of how academic research can help drive innovations in our industry. The efforts are establishing a new paradigm for seismic acquisition and their inventions are deserving of this prestigious award. Congratulations to Felix and Charles. Faki Lu is also receiving the Reginald Fessenden Award this year. Faki has identified and analyzed a broad spectrum of reverse time migration artifacts, including ellipses, rabbit ears, and cigar wave paths. Subsequently, he developed algorithms to suppress such effects from seismic images. These fundamental ideas were first revealed by Faki for reverse time migration, then applied in the 1980s to full waveform inversion. He has developed methods that are now part of the standard seismic imaging workflow for many companies and researchers in our industry. Congratulations, Faki Lu. The next recipient of this year's Reginald Fessenden Award is Laura pyrak -Nolte. Laura developed a fluid flow versus elastic stiffness function that is an important contribution as it provides a fundamental relation between two important and often measured properties. This relation coupled with knowledge of fracture surface properties provided a promising approach for inferring fluid flow properties from seismic data in fractured rock. Laura has made other important contributions to rock physics, including identification of precursory geophysical signatures to rock failure. Congratulations, Laura. The final recipient of the Reginald Fessenden Award is Everett Sloeb. 
Everett has, has contributed key scientific and technological advances in electromagnetic interferometry in a series of papers from 2007 to 2013. Although these papers represent only a small selection of his 120 plus publications, what is clear from this body of work is the power of Everett's basic theoretical understanding and his ability to create entirely novel areas of theory and methodology that were previously beyond the reach of most in academia or industry. Everett also devotes a significant portion of his scientific endeavors to support, engage, and mentor students and postdoctoral students. Congratulations, Everett. Honorary membership is awarded for distinguished contributions to exploration geophysics or the advancement of the profession through service to the society. Being the highest level of membership, the bylaws require that both the honors and awards committee and the board of directors approve these awards unanimously. This year's recipient of honorary membership is James Rector. James is a major developer of seismic wall drilling for which he was awarded the first J. Clarence Karcher Award in 1996. He has authored a large number of papers on a variety of topics. He has had a significant impact on SCG specifically and the profession generally in several different ways. To quote one of his nominators, quote, Jamie is a seminal contribution, contributor to the study of tube wave analysis and removal. Crosswell imaging, reverse time migration, passive seismic imaging, signal processing, finite difference and iconol solvers, attenuation, the study of the near field, near source and mode conversions, applications of machine learning, and more recently, surface wave tomography, end quote. He has also played an important role in mentoring students at the University of California, Berkeley, has been a successful entrepreneur, and has served as assistant and associate editor of geophysics and as vice president of the SEG executive committee. For his technical contributions, entrepreneurship, dedication to students and service to the society, we award honorary membership to James Rector. Congratulations, James. The Virgil Kaufman Gold Medal goes to a person or persons who have made an outstanding contribution to the advancement of the science of geophysical exploration as manifested during the previous five years. This contribution can be of a technical or a professional nature. The recipient of the Virgil Kaufman Gold Medal is Carlos Torres Verdin. Carlos is receiving this award for his body of work in advancing the science of exploration geophysics, especially in the preceding five years. He has made significant contributions in developing new methods in applied electromagnetics, physics-based understanding of fluid flow from borehole measurements, and new laboratory results for quantifying fluid transport in shale. Most recently, Carlos has extended his theoretical work to application in industry. This includes the development of new methods for modeling, processing, and interpreting borehole measurements in non-vertical wells and the geostatistical inversion of well log and subsurface seismic data for reservoir description. His work in these topics continues to be on the leading edge of seismic technology. He, his collaborators, and his students have developed the practical concepts and methods that allow an interpretation workflow that is the standard practice in operating companies. He's published extensively and is highly cited. Carlos is deeply respected by his, his industry and academic peers, as well as the many students he has mentored. SEG is especially thankful for his extensive and continued service to the society through teaching, committee work, editorial efforts, and organization of meetings and workshops. He represents the standard of applied geophysics contributions to which all of us may aspire. Carlos will now share a few remarks. Hello, everybody. I want to thank the Society of Exploration Geophysicists for bestowing on me this year's Virgil Kaufman Award. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I would like to thank a number of people because this award would have never been possible with the help and the contributions of many. First of all, let me begin by thanking 
the awards committee of the SG. I know that you have a very difficult job. I know that you invest a lot of time and effort to go through a whole list of very capable individuals that deserve this award. Second, I would like to thank the Society of Exploration Geophysics at large, because the work you do across the world and across gender and race is extremely important for our society. I want to thank you for that. Um, I would also like to thank my wife, Laurel Trevino, because her support, her work, her intelligence have been strong contributors to these awards. So thank you, Laurel. I would like to thank all of my graduate students during the last 21 years at the University of Texas at Austin. Their work has been fundamental, important for this award. In fact, this award has to go to them as much as it goes to me or even more. At the same time, I would like to thank all the postdoctoral fellows, the research staff, all of you who work with me and were motivated to develop new geophysical techniques over the years with great efforts, with enormous intelligence and great creativity. Thank you so much for that. I would also like to thank the Hildebrand Department of Petroleum and Geosystems Engineers, Engineering, which is where I work, for their support their appreciation, their capabilities, everything that has helped me to be where I am now. Um, it is because of the help of my colleagues at the University of Texas. It is because of the help of the staff at the University of Texas that we do the things we do. So thank you so much. I would also like to say a few words about the process of being here. When I was an undergraduate student at the National Polytechnic Institute in Mexico, I used to go to the library and see the shelves with all the issues of geophysics. And I would look, go there and flip the pages and sp spend hours and hours going through fundamental work, fundamental concepts of geophysics. It was an incredible source of motivation for me. So I think all the authors that more more than 35 years ago were dedicated to writing excellent papers because their work had a significant impact in the lives of many like me. So thank you so much. I would also like to thank my mentors. First of all, I would like to thank all my professors, instructors in high school, the ones who taught me the appreciation of mathematics and physics. It was an important background. So I can all my instructors, professors at the National Polytechnic Institute in Mexico deserve a great word of appreciation because they motivated me even more to pursue work in geophysics. I would like to thank Professor Francis Bostic from the Electrical and Computer Engineering at the University of Texas and Austin because of his supervision in my master's degree. Because of his work, his intellectual wisdom his way of thinking, his intuition. I learned many things from him. So Francis, thank you so much for that. I would also like to thank my supervising professor for my PhD degree at the University of California, Berkeley, Professor Frank Morrison. Frank, you were an excellent, excellent friend. You helped me in many ways. We had great fun. And more than anything, you taught me how, how to have fun and enjoy doing field work. It was outstanding the time I spent with all my colleagues at the University of California, Brooklyn. I would like to thank my brothers, my sisters, and my parents for all their support, their help. Especially, I would like to thank my parents for, for fostering me the love of science and engineering. And I would like to thank the members of my research Consortium of Formation Evaluation at the University of Texas for their enduring constant support during the last 21 years. 
But I would also like to say that one of the most interesting and rewarding things about applied geophysics, our profession, is that is incredibly fun. I could not have, I could not think of a better discipline to have devoted my professional life to. It has been an extremely interesting ride, and most importantly, it has been a lot of fun. And thank you all. This award would have, would have never been possible with the help of many people. So thank you so much, and hook and horns. Congratulations, Carlos. The highest honor bestowed by the Society of Exploration Geophysicists is the Maurice Ewing Medal. The Ewing Medal recognizes a career that has consistently produced distinguished contributions that advance both the science and profession of exploration geophysics. This year, the Society of Exploration Geophysicists is proud to present the Maurice Ewing Medal to Leon Thompson. With more than 4,700 citations, Leon Thompson's landmark 1986 paper, Weak Elastic Anisotropy, is too well known to call for expounding. But it is relevant to say that his seminal piece of work heralded a new era in the seismic method and produced a quantum leap in the way seismic velocity was handled from that point onward. Until 1986, only a few geophysicists cared to take the anisotropy bull by the horns and those few who did usually were confined to a mathematical ivory tower. Leon's work brought anisotropy into the realm of the frontline geophysicist. In addition to his scientific achievements, Leon served the society as SEG Distinguished Lecturer, SEG EAGE Distinguished Instructor, Director of SEG Global, Chair of the SEAM Board, and served on the Executive Committee as both Vice President and SEG president. We are forever grateful for Leon's contributions that have advanced both the science and profession of exploration geophysics. Leon will now share a few remarks. Thank you, Chris, for this honor. It is indeed sobering to be included on a list of Ewing medalists, which includes the names like Hewitt Dix, Frank Kress, Nigel Anstey, Sven Tritel, John Clarebow, Bob Sheriff, these and indeed all of the Ewing medalists are the giants of our profession. But actually, the personal accomplishment that I treasure the most is that 55 years ago, I gained the love of Pat Panema Thompson. And somehow, inexplicably, I've kept that love for all of these years. Without her love and support, I would not be speaking to you today. I also want to thank Peter Duncan, for writing the very generous citation, which you may have seen, and in particular in mentioning in it my father, Eric Thompson. Eric was a geophysicist also, a well-respected oil finder for Amico. I have no doubt that when they subsequently hired me, they hoped to get another like him. We would not be here today without him as well. This day is an occasion which may never come again, apart from the pandemic circumstances because I may well be the last Ewing medalist who actually knew Maurice Ewing. Of course, a couple of years ago, Monik Talwani, who succeeded Ewing as director of Lamont Observatory at Columbia University, received this award, but I may well be the very last. So with your permission, I'd like to tell you a couple of stories about it. I was a graduate student at Lamont in the 1960s. I first met Ewing in my first week at Lamont Observatory at Columbia when he threw a reception at Lamont for the incoming grad students. He congratulated us for our good timing. He said, the coming decades would be a golden age of discoveries about the Earth. Of course, he was correct, more correct than we knew at the time. For a graduate student, the biggest hurdle to be cleared is the oral examination for admission to candidacy for the PhD. Once this is passed, the rest of the process is normally predictable. At Columbia, <coughs> the exam was designed to test how a student thought, since what he knew had already been established by course exams, previous course exams. The questions often concern topics which had never been touched upon in coursework. 
The day of my candidacy exam dawned bright and cold in Manhattan with new snow on the ground. <clears throat> the, the exam started badly for me when the first question, when the first professor asked the first question, suppose you had a rock sample collected from the top of Mount Everest. How would you determine its age? I answered with the geophysical technique. This was a big mistake. Not only, not only was that an inappropriate technique for such sedimentary rocks, but it also betrayed a certain lack of respect for the professor, a paleontologist who expected an answer in terms of fossils. I should have been more astute, both scientifically and politically. The next question came from Professor Ewing. Suppose you were on the Lamont oceanographic vessel, somewhere in the middle of the ocean, collecting data, and you want to post your data on a map. How do you know exactly where you are? The year was 1967. There were perhaps five satellites in orbit. I answered, you could use a satellite, maybe two satellites. Ewing pressed on, and precisely how would you arrange this? I answered, by knowing the orbit of each satellite and by measuring its Doppler shift. Ewing pressed and pressed for more details, which I tried to provide. Finally, I confessed that I would have to do some calculations with pen and paper to decide whether my meth proposed method had sufficient sensitivity. Ewing then said, well, you will be interested to know that six months ago, I proposed to the Office of Naval Research to build and launch a set of global positioning satellites using precisely the technology that you have described this morning. <clears throat> and I received just this past week notice that the proposal has been accepted. The first bird will fly in 16 months. This became the standard method for global positioning throughout the 1970s before being replaced by GPS, which uses a different technology altogether, not feasible in 1967. In conference, Ewing persuaded the paleontologist to drop his objections, and I was admitted to candidacy for the PhD. Thank you, Professor Yuri. Pat and I lived in Manhattan, near the Columbia campus. Every day, I took the Columbia shuttle van to Lamont, which is across the river and upstream uh, a few miles. It sits on a large estate on the Palisades of the Hudson River, which had been gifted to Columbia some years earlier. Ewing was the founding director. One Saturday, Pat came with me on the van and wandered about the extensive grounds while I worked in my office. It was springtime and she encountered a gardener tending the grounds outside the director's house at the edge of, of the Lamont estate. She chatted with him for an hour or more on gardening and many other topics. When it was almost time for us to go back to Manhattan, she came to find me in my office and said, you have to meet this gardener. He is so nice and so smart. So we went to look for the gardener. The gardener turned out to be Director Maurice Uray, one of the greatest geophysicists of his generation, wearing his old clothes and working on his knees in the dirt among his rose bushes. I think that Doc Ewing would be pleased with us today to see the progress that we geophysicists have made in not only in understanding the deep interior of the earth, but also in developing its resources for the good of society. And his spirit, is with us today as we seek to respond to the challenges arising from those very same advances of global warming. I am pleased and honored to be included on the list of Maurice Ewing medalists. Congratulations, Leon. Before concluding this event, I have one final recognition. Rick Miller has been an outstanding SEG president for the 2019-20 term. Rick was faced with many challenges this year, but thanks to countless hours of his time and his leadership, SEG is prepared to move forward as a strong professional society dedicated to serving its members. I would like to take this moment to thank Rick and recognize his hard work and dedicated service during his presidential term. Thank you very much, Rick. This concludes the SEG honors and awards being awarded this year. Thank you for joining me in recognizing those who have contributed so much to our profession, our society, and our world.